The jet is much preferred for aerodynamic smoothness, for flight performance. You can fly above the weather. This sort of aircraft will have to go through the weather or anything up to 15,000 feet. It doesn't make sense. Propeller-driven transports may not have made sense, but there was only one example of a pure jet VSTOL transport. This is a flight test rig of the Dornier DO-31. The DO-31 program was funded by the German government with the goal of producing a light military transport which could take off and land vertically. Dornier had studied various types of VSTOL propulsion. They rejected the tilt wing because it was too complex and concluded that propellers lacked efficient crews at altitude. In the end, they settled on an ambitious design. Dornier did a very splendid job in doing essentially a practical, and this is the operative word, a practical form of uh, vert vertical takeoff and landing transport. And again, it was a mixture of lift engines and vector thrust engines. They designed an aeroplane, if I can start by drawing a picture in principle, uh, which with a gross weight of, I don't know, I'm guessing 60,000 pounds, it never got a, as high as that. But it had a couple of Pegasus engines inboard, and each of those engines, of course, had vectored thrust. And then they added a uh, lift pod. The Pegasus engines were used for lift and cruise, and the four engines in each wingtip pod were used for lift only. Pitch was controlled through a split nozzle at the tail, which could redirect bleed air up or down. Because the lift engine pods were at the wingtip, they were also employed to control yaw and roll. Yaw was induced by tilting them 15 degrees forward or aft. Roll was provided simply by giving more power to one side. This large seesaw test rig was used to refine the reaction controls in a simulated hover position. The massive stand gave the test pilots free movement in pitch, yaw, and roll. When the reaction control testing was complete, the skeletal DO-31 framework was ready to hover freely. The first hover attempt did not inspire much confidence in the airplane. During this spectacular but unsuccessful display, the plane earned the title Fire-Breathing Dragon. An investigation of this first hover attempt revealed that the engine nozzles had swiveled beyond 90 degrees, causing hot gas re-ingestion and engine compressor stall. The second attempt was made on February 8, 1967. During the third flight attempt, the DO-31 surprised the pilot by jumping into the air while attempting a rolling vertical takeoff. Because the pilot had not intended to hover, the lift engines were tilted five degrees back, with the Pegasus engine nozzles swiveled to an 85-degree setting. But instead of a rolling takeoff, the Dornier test pilots found themselves hovering in an awkward nose-up position. For over two minutes, the DO-31 hung in the air with its nose pointed upward. It never rose above 15 meters, and the first hover flight was an unintentional success.